Let's talk about polyphenol ethers, which I'm just going to call PPEs from now on for simplicity. They're a very niche lubricant, which is used in some very, very specific applications, but it's worth knowing a little bit about them. So, first of all, these molecules are generally formed by a reaction which is known as Ullman ether synthesis. You don't really need to know the details about it. Basically, it's a copper catalyzed reaction where we react an alkali phenate with an aromatic halogen. And what you get is a molecule that looks something like this. Now, this is not the only kind of polyphenol ether. Sometimes they have you know, four or five ringed PPEs, right, as an example. That might be a way that you increase the viscosity of the lubricant. But its structure can give us some clues to the performance of the lubricant. First of all, this molecule is polar. So aromatic rings in general are polar. But if you look across the molecule from top to bottom, what you'll notice is that there are oxygens on the bottom. Oxygens are electronegative, which means that they hold on to the electron pairs. That means that there is a net negative charge on the bottom of this molecule. The other thing is that these are extremely good high temperature lubricants. Right? They perform very, very well at high temperatures. Most of these are designed to operate continuously in the high 200s to low 300 degrees Celsius. And that's not really something that you typically see with synthetic lubricants. You know, a mineral oil, certainly not, right? Even getting into sort of 100 degrees Celsius is, is quite high for a mineral oil. And sustained temperatures in sort of the mid 100s, that's very high for even a polyalpha olefin. So these, to be able to operate at sort of the 200 to 300 degree Celsius mark, that, that's a very, very high temperature application. Now, these are not the only kind of PPEs. In some circumstances, you'll find PPEs where they substitute out one of the oxygen connectors with a sulfur, and that'll give it slightly different properties and uh, a slightly lower uh, temperature threshold. However, the structure of this does give us a clue as to the biggest weakness of these lubricants, which is its cold temperature performance. Now, you might think, mm, hang on, that doesn't really make sense. I thought that the aromatics have really good pore points, and they do, but let's explain that. So remember, paraffins, which are waxes, tend to have very, very uh, high pore points, which is not desirable, because they are easily able to stack and form crystal structures. So what happens at low temperatures is that the intermolecular forces of these uh, particular molecules, it can overcome the kinetic energy of the molecules trying to escape away from each other. Typically, when we have an aromatic ring that we include in here, what it does is geometrically, it forces these uh, molecules to be further apart. Right? And that means that the intermolecular forces between the chains reduce. Right? So that's what um, aromatics generally do for pore points. Now, PPEs are the exception to this, because if we look at the shape, well, PPEs stack together really nicely on top of each other. It's just a function of the geometry. And the reason, one of the reasons that they stack so nicely is because remember, the oxygen and the sulfur are slightly negatively charged, which means that these molecules are also polar. So not only can they use London dispersion forces like a paraffin, they can also <laughs> form polar bonds between them, right? That means that they crystallize at reasonably high temperatures. In fact, uh, most polyphenol ethers uh, have pore points that are in positive degrees Celsius, so around sort of 5 to 10 degrees Celsius, right? So for most applications, if you're unable to, to keep your, your equipment above, you know, 5 or 10 degrees Celsius, these, these molecules are really not going to work for you. One of the other um, things that's a little bit unique about it is just like an ester, because it has that negative charge on the bottom, it is attracted to metal surfaces. So sometimes that's really good. We want that because it, it gives us enhanced film strength. So this makes these base oils quite a good uh, lubricant in terms of machine protection. The other thing that it does is that because it has um, some polarity to it and the intermolecular forces are quite strong, that gives it really high surface tension. And what surface tension means for these lubricants is that they don't wet metal surfaces. So what do I mean by wetting a metal surface? Well, the the curvature, if I place a drop onto a metal surface, is going to be quite, quite narrow, 
which means that it tends to form droplets. This means a couple of things. First of all, in electronics, if I want to lubricate something, a PPE will tend to stay in place. It won't sort of roll and migrate around the application. So in some very niche circumstances, I want a lubricant which is going to stay in place on a metal contact. These are ideal for that. It also means that when you see, like, quote unquote, a pool of this PPE lubricant on top of metal, it's not actually one continuous pool. It's actually made up of a whole bunch of uh, little droplets. So when we talk about metal wetting, something that does wet metals would look something more like this. One of the other unique features of it is it has a very, very low vapor pressure. That makes it ideal for one specific application, which is called a high vacuum diffusion pump. If you've never seen one of these before, this is a pump that has no moving parts. So we use PPEs as like a working fluid for this. We place a, uh, like a heating element under the bottom and we heat it up and that causes the, you know, the, the vapors to come off the working fluid. Now inside these pumps, there's like a sort of like a, a high cylinder that has jets coming out of the bottom. So there's enough of, of a vacuum, sorry, enough vapor that's produced, right? That um, it sort of migrates up and then it comes out these jets at the bottom. And because of the high speed and the high velocity of that PPE vapor, it causes a vacuum in the top of the chamber, right? And that's going to draw some other gas down in through the chamber. Now, the way that you recover the polyphenol ether is that when it hits the walls, the walls are cooled by the, the um, sort of the cooling rings that I've shown here, and that enables you to recover the PPE um, without the gas. So that's a very, very niche application, but it's used in a lot of things like laboratories and that. So that is one circumstance in which PPEs are one of the very few lubricants that can do this specific job. Probably the most famous example of the use of a, of a PPE was actually with my favorite plane of all time, which was the SR-71 Blackbird. Now, I'm obviously showing the SR-71B here because it's the trainer version, it's got the second cockpit, blah, blah, blah. Um, this one was actually owned by NASA, the one that I've got pictured on screen. But if you know anything about the SR-71, this is an aircraft that was engineered for extreme conditions. It was, you know, the, the fastest, let's say, uh, jet engine powered aircraft that has ever existed. I get it, the X-15 has the speed record, but that's more of a rocket, whatever. The SR-71 has, has the kind of speed record and where it was operating, the entire airframe would heat up. So this is a plane that was um, famous for the fact that it leaked fuel while it was sitting on the tarmac. And that's because they had to actually have gaps in the fuselage um, to allow for the expansion of the titanium fuselage as it got up to, to altitude and, um, and its operating speed. One of the other things that's unique about it is that it actually got more efficient the faster it flew. But the engines on this, the, the J58s, which I think were made by Pratt & Whitney, had to be lubricated by a, a very special compound, which they ended up turning to a polyphenol ether because the, the lube oil the design temperature for this system was 316 degrees Celsius. So at that point, you don't care about the cold temperature performance of a, of a polyphenol ether. You care about the high temperature performance of this product. And that's what made PPE such an ideal use case for this particular aircraft. Now that it's been retired, I think they, they retired this aircraft in 91, maybe. Um, uh, it hasn't really seen any use in any other kind of aircraft that we know of, right? Because uh, no other military or commercial aircraft to date kind of goes to the same extremes that the SR-71 did. 